As a food writer, Julene Perry makes a living relaying the latest trends and talents in the city's food scene. Now she's taken the connection she's made with Seattle's best chefs and compiled their knowledge into a cookbook called Seattle Cooks. It's kind of a legacy book. It's a real snapshot in time. This isn't just a cookbook, it's almost a yearbook. Like this is what Seattle's restaurant scene was in 2018. While Perry has eaten all over the city, it's comfort she seeks most when eating out. If you're gonna be spending a couple of hours in a place eating and drinking, it needs to feel, to me, I think it needs to feel like a place that you can stay, that wants you to spend time there. One of Perry's spend some time places is inside the Hotel Theodore. Our first stop tonight is Ryder in downtown Seattle. It's been around for about a year and they specialize in wood fire cooking. Inside is just a gorgeous restaurant and you're gonna come in and you're gonna have lunch and you are probably gonna wanna stick around through happy hour and dinner. My go-to dish at Ryder for lunch is some sort of grain bowl. Today they have a red lentil and quinoa salad. This has cauliflower hummus, a little bit of tahini, pickled egg, feta. It's just delicious. I always get the side of black garlic roasted potatoes and together it's very filling, very flavorful. I love it. Perry's next stop is on Capitol Hill at the intimate Cook Weaver. This is my neighborhood restaurant. I am here a few times a week. I just love it and it is super cute. There's a mural that wraps around the entire restaurant. Cook Weaver may be small, but they always think big with the dishes they put out. This is basically an unrolled Vietnamese fresh roll. It is rice noodle with some carrot juice, curry tofu, some chilies, some fried shallots. The trick is figuring out how to eat it, but I know it's gonna be delicious. Yeah. That's so pretty. This has been on the menu of Cook Weaver since day one. It's one of their signature dishes, the beer battered nori dumplings. And you have these cute little dumplings, they're delicious, on a bed of kimchi tahini. I don't think anyone would not like this dish. Harry's last pick is on Chop House Row at Marmite. If you ever need some sort of oasis in the middle of a very big city, this is like your escape right here. This place is gorgeous. I love this place because it's kind of like this little nook in Capitol Hill. These are tempura squash blossoms. They are stuffed with clams and nori and cheese. This is such a great bar snack. A trip to Marmite would not be complete without the blintzes. Blintzes are crepe-like pancakes that can be filled with either sweet or, in this case, savory goodness. They're so incredible. I know there's a lot of butter and cream in this dish, but if that's what makes this taste so great, it's really working. So while her cookbook is filled with Seattle's best chefs, food writer Julene Perry will <laughs> never stop searching for comfort and good cooking. Thank you, Julene. Here are her picks one more time. First stop was downtown at Ryder. Next was up on Cap Hill, the daring Cook Weaver. Last pick, also on Capitol Hill, Marmite. And you can find Julene's book, Seattle Cooks, on Amazon, or it's available right now at Costco as well. All right, we are at the museum.